neighborhood everything is so difficult you just can't seem to finish that project you just cannot seem to be able to get ahead with that work that you needed to do at the end of the day at the end of your visit nothing really was accomplished and you can't understand why you put in all the effort but you have no results and then you go on a trip you go to another location, you go to another village, you go to another city, another country, and everything is just suddenly working. And everything seems so effortless. There's a lot of support around you, and you're happy and joyful. But did you ever wonder whether your physical location, the place you're in, had anything to do with it? That is what we'll be talking about today. That is the topic for today's discussion. We'll be talking about why physical location matters and especially when it comes to your destiny, even more importantly, when it comes to the restoration of your stolen or exchanged destiny. I'll be sharing some spiritual laws and principles associated with this and we'll be looking at some Bible verses. We'll be going to scripture to look at what it says about physical location. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so I said physical location really, really plays an important role when it comes to the restoration of your stolen or exchanged destiny. Why is that? Well, when we go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, and it says that our fight is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. What does that mean? What was Apostle Paul referring to in this verse? Well, first he said that our fight, our wrestling is not with the physical, right? So it's not with people, but it is in the spiritual realm. It is with spiritual entities, okay? So that is the beginning of it. And then he goes on to list these entities, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. What are all these? These is a hierarchy of the kingdom of darkness. This is, it's not the whole hierarchy, but it's part of the hierarchy. And this hierarchy is there to, it's sort of the rank, the different roles, the different positions that are there to run things in the kingdom of darkness. So some of them have more authority than others. It starts with principalities. Principalities are the rulerships of princes. And so these princes in the kingdom of darkness have a lot of authority. What does that have to do with physical location? What does that have to do with destiny exchange? What does it have to do with the restoration of your stolen or exchange destiny. It has a lot to do with it because your destiny being stolen or exchanged is the work of the kingdom of darkness, okay? So the powers of the kingdom of darkness were utilized to be able to steal or exchange your God-given destiny, all right? So if the powers of the darkness, the powers of kingdom of darkness were used to facilitate this exchange, then there is a certain entity that was involved with this and there's going to be a certain entity supporting that exchange so that you don't get it back. So while you're praying, you're fasting, you're breaking evil covenants, asking for it to be returned to you, claiming your inheritance so that you can get that restoration, these kingdom of darkness entities are there some of them are involved to ensure that you never get it back. Some of them are working to ensure that things remain status quo, okay? And so why is that important? That is important because you will have to address these entities in order to get back your destiny, all right? You will have to address it. You'll have to do something about it based on what level is involved with the exchange of your destiny, okay? So we've talked about principalities being the princes, the rulerships. They are governing a large area, 
okay? So when we go to Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, we see an example of this in that verse where Daniel was fasting for three weeks, 21 days, praying for something, and then he saw a vision, and in that vision, he was told that the angel was dispatched with his answer the very next day. But there was a prince, a prince of Persia, who blocked this angel so that the angel would not bring the answered prayer back to Daniel. Okay, so this fight was going on in the second heaven. Daniel is here on earth. God is up here. The almighty God, Jehovah, is up here. And in the middle here, the second heaven is where you have these principalities, where you have these powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. That is the realm they operate in. When the angels are dispatched and they come and wage war, in accordance with this Daniel, this is where it is happening in the second heaven, okay? Daniel, we are here on earth praying, sending our prayers up. This second heaven is where the battle is happening, okay? So, in the location, physical location where Daniel was, this prince of Persia was governing that area and he blocked that angel from passing and going, descending unto where Daniel was to deliver the answered prayer. It took Archangel Michael, who is an archangel, so he's higher in authority, higher in rank. He has more power to come and fight this principality, the prince of Persia, and he overcame him. And then the angel now was able to bring the answered prayer to Daniel. So that gives us information, very valuable information, knowledge that physical location matters. Because where Daniel was, that prince of Persia completely blocked his answer from coming to him. Okay? So in other areas, there is principalities. They govern large areas you know, territory, very large areas, like two or three countries that large. That is their spiritual authority. So they govern who receives an answered prayer and who doesn't. Most of the time, it's usually prayers or things to do, destinies of countries, destinies of continents, they control, right? So if a certain country wants to restore their stolen destiny, because Destinies can be stolen not only of individuals, but even families, countries, continents. Then they have to address the principality that is governing that whole territory, that whole area. All right. So that is why physical location matters. Now, your personal destiny may not be um, the interest of this principality because they have big things to deal with the destinies of countries, the destinies of continents. We go down the rank, it could be powers. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Principalities, then powers. They are a little lower in rank. That means their authority is a little bit less than the principality. But powers here is where you find the strong men. So the ones that govern the destinies of families the ones that govern the destinies of people in a particular neighborhood, the ones that govern the destinies of people in a particular village, the ones that govern the destinies of people in a particular church, you know, so groups of people who are connected in one way or another, there is a, a, a power. And that power, we also sometimes call it strong man or strong men. So a strong man could also be a human being who has partnered with this demonic entity called powers, all right, to stop the destiny, to steal the destiny, to collect the destinies, to exchange the destinies of the people within their realm of authority. So if it's a strong man in a family, then they are collecting the destinies of members of that family and using it for the kingdom of darkness. They are the strong man. And this strong man has, is 
a partnership with these demonic powers in order to be able to do that and in order to be able to keep that stolen or exchanged destiny so when you're praying and breaking the evil covenants you're breaking the covenants with the strong man and you're reclaiming what is yours you're asking for your destiny to be returned back you will have to deal with a strong man but the strong man's authority is only to their realm of influence that is why physical location matters. So if this strong man is um, their realm of influence, their sphere of influence is only for your village, you have to leave that village. When you move that village to another village, that strong man does not have authority over that, what is happening in that other village. Okay? So they have lost that authority over you. The moment you moved, you physically moved from their sphere of influence, they have lost that authority over you. That is why physical location matters. You see my point? So sometimes when you move from one continent and you move to another continent, that principality that was running things and shutting people's destinies down in that continent has no say over what is happening to you to your life to your progress in a different continent because there is a different principality to run things there it's a spiritual law okay it is a spiritual law where can we see a good example of this i will take you to genesis chapter 12 verse 1 where we can see a good example of this this is where God is talking to Abram before he became Abraham and God wants to bless him. God is telling him the first thing he says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. He says, then the Lord said to Abram, leave your family. He told him, um, God had said to Abram, go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. Why is God asking Abraham to leave his family, leave his father's household, leave his kindred, his people, his cousins, everybody, and go to another land where God will show him? And then it continues in verse 2, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Why is God telling him to leave first and then he will bless him? Why don't God bless him first? And then he can live with those blessings mm -mm. because physical location matters. What do we know about where that location where Abraham was? These are the Chaldeans. Abraham's father was Terah, a Chaldean. What do we know about these Chaldeans? They were into heavy, heavy witchcraft. They were into serious witchcraft. So that whole physical area, that location, that village, was witchcraft ridden left right and center god wanted to bless abram not his whole family not terror not his people not his cousins just abram in order for god to do that he had to have abram one move away physically move with his own belongings to somewhere and different land where god will show him and then there god will bless him God could not bless him where he currently was at that time because spiritual laws and principles, there is a principality there who is governing that area who has said nobody should be prosperous. Nobody's name in that area should be great. These blessings that God was saying is going to give to Abraham, is going to bless him, his name will be great and um, he will be blessed. In that area, the principality is ensuring that nobody in that area will have a great name. Nobody in that area will be blessed. Nobody will be a blessing. So in order for God to bless Abraham, he has to come out from under the influence, sphere of influence of this principality. He has to come out from that area, go under a different area, different territory. And then now those blessings that God has for him, they can come without opposition, without being fought, without that fight that was happening we saw in Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, 
without that fight happening, without any principality coming to oppose, hey, you angel, what, what blessing is this you're taking to Abraham? You can't do it here, don't you know? There is a law. The principality has said no prosperity, no name, great names here. Mm -mm, it can't happen here. He has to move to a different place where a principality, where he is going, is concerned about other things. All right. Maybe nobody will be having children. Maybe nobody will be different, different things. They are, they are concerned with different things. That is why you see in particular areas, there's a certain problem which is just common. There's a particular area, a village where everybody is poor. Poverty is everywhere. And because why? The power that is governing that sphere of influence is interested in poverty for that area. And sometimes the leadership has also come into agreement with that spirit of poverty. So everybody who is under that leader's will be attached with the spirit of poverty. So whoever has a destiny of wealth, they cannot realize that wealth. They cannot reclaim their destiny of wealth while they are under that village, under that leader, in that physical location. It can work. It's a spiritual law. These are spiritual principles. That person will have to leave, physically leave, move, go to another city where people are prospering over there. And then that blessing will also be able to come manifest in that person. The answer prayer will come. They'll reclaim their destiny of wealth in that location where poverty is not an issue. Where poverty is not an issue there. No spirit of poverty is operating there. So as they enter there, they have broken the covenant with the spirit of poverty, with everything that was attached to them from that village. Now their breakthrough can come there. They start a business over there. It is prospering. It is working well. They are reclaiming their destiny. Why that move was really, really key. That is why I said physical location matters. Okay. If you're in a family, you are there with your sisters. Nobody is getting married. No sweeters are coming. Your next neighbor, nobody was getting married. The other side, across the street, no one is getting married. On the other side, next two streets, people got married, they got divorced. You have a destiny of marriage. For you to reclaim that destiny that was stolen and is working for the kingdom of darkness somewhere, you're praying, you're fasting, you're breaking that covenant with the spirit of anti-marriage, now, part of your restoration may involve you having to leave your household the way Abraham had to leave his family, his kindred, his father's household. Go to another city and see. Once you move, you see some suitors starting to approach you. Oh, you're new here. We have been looking for someone like you, a new position, a new opportunity. In that new opportunity, you meet with somebody who becomes your husband that is how it works so as you're doing this process of reclaiming your destiny think about your physical location okay and listen to what the holy spirit may be trying to tell you or impress upon you about your physical location at times also your physical location matters because there may be some things that have been buried in your home in your compound that you don't know about and as long as those demonic artifacts are in your property, then you cannot successfully reclaim your stolen or exchanged destiny. So when you move to a new house, then it doesn't have those demonic things that have been buried. You can be in a better position to reclaim your inheritance because sometimes with the use of witchcraft, sorcery, when your destiny is changed or stolen, somebody may have come and dropped something in your house. You don't know that it's there, but it's affecting your destiny. Okay, it is keeping your stolen destiny in use by the kingdom of darkness, by the people that stole it. So as long as that thing is there in your physical location, you cannot successfully reclaim your destiny. 
So physical location matters. When you move and you go to a place where it doesn't have that thing that was dropped in your compound that somebody came and buried in your compound, then you can successfully reclaim your destiny. That is why physical location matters so that you go somewhere where you can have a fresh start. Okay. And then based on spiritual laws and principles, the principalities, the powers that are operating in that place, the strong men, those territorial spirits, all that you is, is, is already taken care of. All right. By the time God is instructing you to move to a particular place, not just any place, a particular place, it is because it is going to be in alignment with spiritual laws and principles. Okay. So that that answered prayer can now come so that that destiny of yours that was stolen or exchanged can now be restored to you. It cannot be restored to you in the old location because same spiritual laws and principles same principalities of powers that facilitated it being stolen from you they are still in power they are still in operation so it can't work okay thank you so much god bless you do not forget to like this video if this is the type of content that you really like also Please share this video with one or two people that you feel may really benefit from the spiritual insight words that I've just shared with you. And lastly, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider doing so to formally join our growing, growing family. It's so exciting. Thank you so much. Have a blessed, blessed and a wonderful day. Bye-bye.